All right, welcome back, students. Let's get quickly started with Django. All right. Uh, so what we have seen so far are class-based views and function-based views. So I've given you the rough about each and everything, but today I'll give you more theoretical about uh, class-based uh, views. All right. So let's get started with the class-based views. So these uh, theoreticals are very important for clearing an interview, right? Because when, once you apply a company, so they'll be asking you basics, uh, right? Uh, so they do not provide, so as long as class-based views are concerned, they do not provide, or we can say they rather provide an alternative way to implement views as Python objects instead of functions, right? So we'll write it down here, objects instead of, functions right so I written it here that we use objects instead of functions now what do you call an object for example we have a class a how do you access this class All right you you say a is equal to my object All right uh, so this basically is an instance of the class you can name anything right so for example now class a has a function All right or class a has let's say about fun B. So it's going to be a function. No arguments are accepted here. So I can use here print hello, right? So I can use print hello here. So now what do you do once you have to call this function B of the class? Because the class can have as many functions as you can. So we have function B and we can have function C, right? I'll say all. Now if I say print or we can say we have to access, I can say A dot right what is a basically it's the class object so we can say uh, or we can accept it directly with uh, my object right here uh, right and uh, we can say now class a or we can say my object is equal to a now what it, what this does is actually this creates an instance of a right here right and now i can say a dot i can call a dot fun b and now if I call this function, it's going to print all. If I call a dot fun a, it's going to print hello, all right? So first it's going to print hello and then it's going to print all or vice versa, whatever you call. But if you want to call them all together by supplying a name, I can go ahead and say, hey, this is the function that accepts one argument known as name. And this is the function that accepts another argument known as name. So I will supply here Fahim. And I'll supply here Fahim, right? And now I can use, I can concatenate it with hello plus name, right? So I get hello Fahim. So this is how uh, we basically deal in object-oriented programming. But what is this A? This A actually is the class name and this is the instance of the class. Once you create an instance of the class, you can access all the functions with that instance now my object is an instant the moment i say dot i can access func a func b i can access anything right so that's why it's an object so now we say that we have objects instead of functions in class based <coughs> views <coughs> and they do And they do not replace function-based views. So they can never ever replace function-based views, All right? Oh, but what they does um, is, uh, for example, we have a base, we have two type of class-based views. Uh, number one, we have a, a class-based view, base view. Right, so we can say base view and another we have generic generic class based view. So here we have base right class based view. So we have a base class based view and we have a generic class based view generic class-based view. So there are two different views that we always deal with. What are the advantages? 
well organization of the code related to specific http methods that is get post etc can be addressed by separate methods instead of conditional branching now uh, i said uh, http methods can be accessed i'll show you the demo of this by or http methods like get and post can be accessed by uh, or we can say addressed addressed by separate methods instead of Now what is this? Uh, so I go to my view. Now we know that we are viewing the view as, what is this view as? I'll just make you understand. But if I go to my views.py, so let me get rid of this profile right here. So I don't want this anymore. Okay, uh, so let's see this. Uh, now the moment, uh, you know, uh, basically what happens. So let's, let's first go with a function based view rather than a class based view. Then I'll show you both. <clears throat> I'll say for example define right and uh, I will say uh, login so this is going to be my function uh, right and it's going to accept one parameter which is going R E Q U E S T request and now I'll go ahead here uh, and I say return and I will render this time uh, I will actually render uh, or I can say instead of render okay I'll render the request and I will pass uh, the second function if I control Z and if I show you right I used to return the render request which is login dot HTML here so same is the thing that I'll be doing here so I will return the render request which is login.xstml and I'll pass a message right here and let us say message is equal to get is called right and now let's go and uh, make our urls.py <clears throat> uh, so I'll not uh, just I'll delete this code and I'll say I don't want anything here so I will go to view and I will call uh, this view views dot login. <clears throat> so this is the method that we're calling whenever anyone types login. So we are going to go to the login page. Uh, so let me just show you this first. Now if I type login, I should be able to go to the login page, but I have any kind of an error. So I don't want to import anything here. All right, so let me go ahead. Okay, now get is called. Now what do you get? Get is called. But once I hit post, I'm still getting get is called. But if I go to my login form and I see that the form method is post. Now, how do you handle this? This is what I have written right here. HTTP methods like get and post can be addressed by separate methods instead of conditional branching. But we do not have separate methods here. So we'll be using conditional branching here. So I can say if request dot method, right? And I'll say M-E-T-H-O-D. If it is post, so I'll say conditional. If it is equivalent to equivalent to um, post, right? So this is now my condition. What I got to do is the following, right? And return the rendered response here, get is called, right? And if it is get, and I'll go ahead and make another if, I'll say else, message is equal to post is called, and you go and render to the same place, right? Uh, so this is how it is going, right then? get is called and the moment I click on login and now you see post is called so we are differentiating between get and post by using conditional branching if is a conditional and the branch is else so it's called as conditional branching 
So you are differentiating between the request method, which is by default get when you load an application and you call the post explicitly, right, uh, using the body of an HTML page. Uh, so you can see that you are differentiating between both using a conditional formatting here. But now in this case, if you want to use, uh, let's say about a login, right, or even if you want to do something on post like this. So if, if it's post, uh, so I don't have to show post is called, I'll say, okay, nothing is called here. I'll say login here. All right, I'll show you another way to this. So you'll say login here and now you can see you're getting actually nothing at all. And now what you do here, you use another conditional branching. So you can say if, um, uh, let's say about, <laughs> now let's call this form F-O-R-M or I can say F-R-M, which is the object of form. So I'll say is equal to Mm, we'll have to call the get and the post. So let's see. Or let me do this here. I'll say if request dot uh, I can say request dot post. So I'll say if request dot post. I can use. I used it. If I show you earlier, we were doing what we what we used earlier was. Right? You can say request dot post. We already used it, so we'll be using the same thing, right? So I'll say request dot post, and I will call input type text which is txt username and txt password quickly i know that you know this already so i don't have to spend uh, too much of time here mm, all right i'll say if request dot post username is not equivalent to empty right and request post txt password is not equivalent to empty in that case what you got to do is if it is not equivalent to MPT, you will say message is equal to good, right? And you'll go and say else so message is equal to good, and I'll say else message is equal to please write a username and a password. Right, so these are two different things that we do in view. So I'll log in, log in here. So I'll say, please write a username and a password. And if it is not empty, we get good, right? So this is what we do. Let's do the same here. You can add another if condition here, but that's not an issue. Uh, let me go and use the same, but this time using a class. So I will go with class accounts. So I'll go, right? So this is my class name accounts. <laughs> And I will say define. I'll define a function this time here, and 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 and, and call this get and post. So we have two different things. We know that we have two different functions that we uh, basically use. One is get, and another is uh, post. So I'll define get here, right? So I'll say define a function uh, get, and it takes self, right? We know that the functions should include self. All those who know. And this actually means self actually means accounts right because you have to access every object with the name of the class so that's why it actually means accounts uh, so and the second parameter it is going to take is a request so i'm defining two parameters here right and i'll say i'll use the same this is the function get what do you want on get i want this particular thing to happen on get right now you can clearly see this is happening on get and I just don't want to, I want to indent it properly. <clears throat> and the second function that I define is post. It is again going to take one argument self and it's going to take a request. So even if you don't want, okay, uh, so I'll say message. Now I'll have to use the entire code right here, which I used using else. So I'll say if it is post, all right, no need to have message right here. Now, see what is happening here. Now, once you call accounts and you use as view, right? And uh, it is going to be decided whether get or post has to be called. Now, see, 
calling two different functions in the class that's what I've written here right HTTP methods like get and post can be addressed by separate methods are we addressing them by separate methods yes get is addressed by get and post is addressed by post are they both separate methods yes what is the difference between method and uh, a function right and once you access a function without a class name so here the function has a class here the function has no class so this is called as function if it has no class it's function right function if it is not associated with any class right and the second thing that we will say method <clears throat> method if it is associated yeah associated If it is a method, if it is associated with the class. So it just some figures and put like in red yellow yes. Okay, if it is a method, if it is not associated with the class, now you can see. Sorry, if it is associated with the class. So now get is the method. Why? Because it has a class account and um, uh, login is a function because it does not belong to any class. It's as simple as anything. So we don't have to complicate anything right here. All right. Uh, so these are two different things. So, right. Uh, so this is called as uh, so I'll just give you the overview and I'll also give you the PDF today so that you can practice very hard. All right. So I'll just delete it. Now we said that it can be addressed. This is conditional branching. Now what is conditional branching? Now you can clearly see this is conditional branching. All right. We use used if and else to differentiate between get and post and here we did not use uh, conditional branching we used two separate methods which is get and post right so i hope you've understood uh, this kind of a logic right here. all right and now let's carry on two separate methods so now what are those two separate methods uh, i'll just show you one is get and another is Oh, so this is what we were talking of, what we were talking about, two separate methods, all right, and now you can clearly see them, they are two separate uh, methods right here, okay, so I hope you have understood this part of the story, uh, right, and another part of the story is basically class-based views, okay, for example, you want to go to a specific uh, uh, let's say but you want to go to a specific page or you want to render a specific page all right uh, so uh, I, I shown you the last time as well and now if everything goes fine you can go to a specific page or you can go to a different page right here and you can take a message all right if everything is fine if the method is post instead of good I will say your request to pro profile.html all right and you would need to show me profile.html so let me go log in here so please write a username and a password and now you write anything so what i should get is good why am i getting good here so am i typing good i'm not typing good right here and message is also here now there's no message so i will just use hello here <clears throat> so I'll use hello here. Okay, so, so please write a username and a password. And now you can see you're getting good. You're still getting good on post. <clears throat> and if it is not equivalent to empty, and if it is not equivalent to empty, in that case, you render the request on profile.html and pass the message as hello. So are we going to profile.html? No. <clears throat> We're not going to profile.html here because once we call post, so let me save this. If it's not equivalent to empty and 
if it is not also returned render request and go to <coughs> profile.html so where are we getting good so we don't have anything good here so let me it is still getting good i don't know okay let me uh, stop the server and restart the server still getting good but where is this good coming from I have actually no idea All right. okay we're doing it uh, we have to do change here okay why are we doing the change here first let me go and use the class sorry we have to use the class here but what we are doing here is we're using the function all right, so I'll say whenever path this is hidden, so you will have to call first. All right, you have to call views here. So we'll say from all right uh, views import the class name which is accounts. All right, and uh, I'll say now accounts dot. So we'll say view underscore as and this is this is what we used earlier if I show you uh, right so we already use this as view so we'll be using the same here but we are not getting it okay it's as underscore view so we're not passing any parameter right here so let's not pass any parameter mm, and let's see now login how does it behave Oh, they're still getting an error right here so we'll have to get the error so let me go ahead mm, I'll say so accounts has no as view why as it's basically small v so I used capital as underscore view so let me see the error account has no view so let me go to accounts first because from views import accounts so I'm already using right it already has let me get rid of the function first so I don't want functions here I only want a class so accounts is the class name ACC O account so that's fine so from views import accounts and then we have get and we have post right here fine so we should not be having any problem right here <coughs> I'll go to URLs okay let me import vie the views dot accounts so I'll say views dot accounts dot um, as underscore view so I'll say as view so I may have to import this as view import view so we're already doing views okay let me save this and check for error we still have this error whenever we call login so name is equal to login page okay as view is a function so we're calling it as function Mm, okay, let me go directly to accounts from accounts dot as view. I don't know what error are we getting. I don't know. Let me say from uh, travel app dot views import account. So now let's see accounts as view should not be showing any error maybe yeah we still have an error right here class accounts has no as view member why are we getting this error today get is defined post is okay we are not okay uh, the basic thing that I told you yesterday that the class should inherit from view all right I keep on forgetting these things right so because uh, you are creating a different view but the parent remains the same the parent functions and everything else which is in this view class remains the same 
That is why accounts will now become the child of view. View will be the parent class. That's why we will be inheriting from the accounts. Uh, accounts will be inheriting from view class. So that, that's what the error was. So we don't have any more error here. Let's save it. And there should not be any error. Okay, let's run it. Yeah, log in here. So I say please write a username and a password. Now you can access in class-based view. So you're not accessing it uh, based on anything else. And now you can see you're getting hello and you're actually being redirected to the profile page all right you can clearly see this is the profile page if i show you i will not display message i'll say message from the profile page so now if i do this if i go to login now let me go to urls and this is the login page Please write a username and a password. So I'll say Fahim and I'll say password. Now you can say hello from the profile page. And why are you redirected to the profile page right here? Now if you go to views.py, you'll see that on post you have this conditional branching, which again is hard coding here. We should not hard code. We should have a separate business logic page. But yeah, you understood that if everything goes fine, you're redirected to profile page and you're passing a message, hello. Or you can pass the message, the username itself, if you want to pass. I am passing now the complete TXT username as a message. And I'll go to my profile.x system, right? I'll say hello. And the username that I'm passing, so I'll say hello message from the profile page. And I'll, I'll log in again. So I'll say an ID and password is password. So I'll say hello and ID from the profile page. Let's log in again as Fahim FAHRM and let's say password is password. Hello Fahim from the profile page. Now you're seen and you understood it completely now uh, that why do you, because there are two methods that we'll be dealing in, right? Or there are two methods that we will be dealing with and those two methods you already understood, right? So that's why I wrote and I said, right, that two separate methods instead of a conditional branching and we've seen conditional branching we've also seen how do we use two different methods but yeah do not forget to inherit right and if you go to views do not forget to inherit your class from the view class right you have to use inheritance here that is why i'll be replacing it right here all right, so it's inheriting from view and then uh, the URL that we are using this time will be uh, the following URL pattern, which is this URL pattern right here. All right. All right, so that's number one. And uh, let's say point number two. Uh, what? Well, uh, what are the advantages uh, of uh, uh, you know using these views one i said that you can address get and post by two different methods right and it has uh, object oriented techniques multiple inheritance can be allowed here right and base class views can be thought of parent views which can be used by themselves in the near future you'll see that also right and uh, base view actually uses uh, if we are talking of base view it actually uses a package known as base dot view right so you'll understand it in the near future and we have also seen methods like uh, args as their kw args as their right and we'll also see how do we use args and kw args with this right in the in the near future as well uh, right and uh, for example if you want to display a message only now here uh, that you have successfully logged in so instead of rendering and passing anything else uh, what can you do um, is uh, you can actually return an http response so i'll say return and http and say http uh, so you can return an http a response and as a response you can say self <coughs> dot or we can use it here let me go and define a class variable known as fahim khen and now i can pass the same response as self dot name so let's see return the http response as self dot name mm, all right and now we'll see that will not be redirected to a page 
right? But we'll get the response here. So I'll say for him and I'll say pass. Now you can see um, HTTP response is not defined here, uh, right? We had to define alt plus F8. Okay, so we have to import it, right? <coughs> we have not imported it yet, so we'll have to import it first. Right, so we'll say django.http. So I'll say from django.http import http response. So now we are importing http response right here. So let me go and take the response now. Please write a username and a password. So I'll say fhimps or something. So now we're getting a complete new page as a response, not a rendered response, right? You can see we're getting a new page as a response right here. You can do this as well. But yeah, in our case, I want my response to be a rendered response, which is a template. I'm accessing a template, right? And that's true, right? And so now the second thing uh, that, for example, you are actually going and taking this message, uh, which is right here, txt uh, username, all right? And you can even go and do this for example you can supply parameters as name for example if I go and supply name here all right so I'll go to as view and I can supply one parameter name is equal to Fahim right so I'll get an error here I know that for sure we'll be getting an error all right and the error is if I read it received an invalid keyword name, right? And it's basically what are you trying to give? It does not accept your passing name is equal to for him as an argument to as view. Does it accept if I go to my views.py, my class accounts has no parameter name. But if I say name is equal to something, let's initialize name with nothing, maybe uh, an empty string. And now we have a we have a variable name here in the class. Will I be able to access this now? Right, still now, if you see the message right here, you can say invalid key main name as view only accept arguments that are already attributes of the class, right? Now, is uh, this attribute of the class, is name attribute of the class? You'll have to actually understand in order for name to be attribute of the class, what do you do? How do you make it? Uh, right uh, attribute of the uh, class uh, right and uh, uh, if the view accepts the attribute of the class right here so that's why you have to actually uh, you know accept it right or for example if name is the attribute of the class right here let me save let me restart this server now you can clearly see we don't have any error here right and if i log in welcome ggg from the profile page and now why uh, if i delete this name from my accounts class and now if i refresh and i log in i should be able to get this error right name is not an attribute that means whatever you're passing here as an argument it should be available the attribute name should be available in the view class and now we can see the attribute name is clearly available in the view class now if i have this name all right maybe at times you don't go over this uh, error so you'll have to start the server once again and after starting the server now you can see it works actually fine so now the attribute name is already defined uh, right here and for example this is right say we'll say this is going to be login url and this login url is defined here by nothing so it's not defined here and now instead of this profile.html i will use the login i will use the same login but i'll use self dot login url now again say I'm using self, self means within this class, the name of the class account and a login URL and you can say login URL, 
right and now whatever you are you pass you'll be redirected to that url for example if i say hello from the profile pages here and now if i go to urls.py and i pass accounts.asview login page <coughs> right <coughs> instead of name instead of name i will pass something uh and let's say about it is login url is equal to i want to get redirected to profile.html or you can say slash profile.html and now what you do you're calling uh, the class accounts as a view whether the get or post will be decided but you're passing one argument login url which is profile.html now the moment you enter the class you'll see login url is defined here and you're using the same login url to get redirected so let's see now Okay, we have an error right here uh, name so we still are stuck with name let's restart the server all right so let's go ahead and now so please write a username and a password and if i write username and password so and template does not exist slash login slash mm, uh, so i'll have to change it in the urls.py let's not use any slash right here okay all right, so let's go ahead and say login and I'll say Fahim and password. Hello Fahim from the profile page. And for example, I don't want to get redirected to the profile page. Uh, let's say we have this home page right here. You can say hello. And I can say, I will use the message attribute here because we're passing message, right? Hello dash from the home page all right so i'll have to use home.html now so i'll say hey don't get redirected to profile but get redirected to home.html and now if i use the same let's say okay login here please write a username and a password so i write for him and pass and now let's say template does not exist at slash login why okay i just h o m e home.html my spelling mistake Let's refresh and you get redirected to home page. Now I don't want to get redirected to home page again. I want to get redirected to the main page. So I'll say this is hello frame from the home page. And let's go and erase it to profile. And now we should be redirected back to the profile page. So I'll say NIT and password as password. Hello NIT from the profile page. So this is what you can do, right? And considering the third option, let me complete this option right here. Let me complete the conditional formatting right here. And now if everything goes fine, I'll use another if here. I'll say if, um, uh, let me use this, uh, uh, let me take this username. Okay, uh, let me just define it again. Let me use this post username and take it to username variable. Um, and let me take uh, this password to the password uh, variable so as a request dot post the txt username goes to username and password goes to password i'll say if user name is equal to blank and password is equal to blank if both the things are blank means they do not enter anything right if they are not equal to blank right and then go and choose this else if they are equal to blank right please write a username and message will take please write a username and password and you remain in the login page except you pass a different message which is please write a username and a password and now in that case if the username and password has typed something if the user has typed the username and the password what you do you will say if username is equal to equal to nit and hard code it and check and the password user has entered is equal to equal to password then what you want to do is render right and then go and render the user to the following page taking taking uh, the user name as a message okay so now you're taking username as a message i'll show you again if username and type password is not blank if it is blank you go to else this if is not executed nested if second if will be executed only if the first if condition is true and if the password and user will match, you basically render and you go to the 
uh, login URL and you type the message here and now what if the second if is not right first is right and you'll say else right I will say else I need to return the same page which is the login page if you have typed the wrong username and password you want to remain in the login page you don't want to go anywhere else you want to remain in the login page but yeah instead of please write a username and password so you will say incorrect i n c o double r e c incorrect username and a password right and now it should work so let me go ahead <coughs> Okay, we have some kind of an error right here. So let me see what kind of error do we have. We're not closing it down here. Message and we're not closing the brace as well. So here as well. Okay, let's try again. It should work. I still have an error. So let me see the error. Yeah, we still have an error. I don't know. Let me see the error. Indentation does not match. Yeah, indentation error is there. Mm, okay, let me see this. Username instead of this. So, indentation should match. Okay, else. Right, else. So, it should match. Now, yeah, why well now we don't have any error? Do we have? We still have an error, right? I don't know. What error do we have? what is the error okay let me get rid of this here okay no error sir was in the ash all right save it Yeah, we have an error here. Request render hmm, self dot login URL. Okay, login URL is defined. Else we we'll go here. It is going to take this message. Let me save it again. Return render request self.login URL and uh, the message you're passing. So there's absolutely no problem. And the message you're passing, and else the message you're passing. So we should. We don't have any problem at all here, so I don't know why are we getting this message. Message called incorrect I N C O incorrect username and password M E S S A G E M E S S A G message. So no error. And here we return the render response, which is request login dot html, and you get the message, which is your message. I don't get. Let me write it. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea about this error. So let me just get rid of all the errors. All right, so I go inside the function and I will say if the username that username has typed is not equivalent to blank and uh, the, the, the password username has typed is not equivalent to blank. In that condition, what if it is right if it is blank i go inside and i'll say return go back to login.html and pass the message and what is the message so i'll say message is equal to please write a username and a password and if it has typed so the second condition i'll check it for is if username the username has typed is equivalent to equivalent an id hard coded this is where you have to get contact or you have to attach a database and i'll say and password is equivalent to equivalent to password 
in that case you don't go to login page but go to pro and go to profile.html and pass the message as message and what is the message message is equivalent to actually once you match the username and password your message is going to be the username itself so you're passing the username itself what if it does not match all right means that username and password is there the user has written the username and password but it's not an IIT and password it does not match and in that case what you got to do you remain in login.html but use the following message and the message is incorrect username and password okay now earlier we had some indentation error so i hope <coughs> we have no we hope we do not have any indentation errors now so let me go ahead and run it again we still have an indentation error isn't it yeah and yeah, login okay return render request login.html line number 20 is showing an error so this is where the error is generated so just to make sure but there is no error right so let me refresh just a small indentation error and now we don't have any error at all unexpected indent is done okay now we are successful please write a username and a password i write something that does not exist Incorrect username and a password. Now, if I write an IIT and I write password, I'll be redirected to the profile page and I get hello from the profile page. And now, instead of using the static URL profile page here, I'll use two properties. Uh, right? I'll use two properties here. One is login URL, another is default URL. Now we are having two attributes here. One is login URL and another is default URL. Now we can see if the username and password does not match, you go to else. You say, hey, you want to remain in the login.url. So I'll say self.login URL. <coughs> and if the username and password does not match, so you want to remain in the login URL, I'll again use self.login URL. All right, and in case you, the username and password is correct, I will use self dot. Uh, let's say about default URL. Default URL will be the URL you will be redirected after the login is successful. I'll go to urls.py, and now you can see it will generate an error because you are passing two attributes and only one is acceptable. So I'll have to pass another attribute right here. Login URL is equal to this, and I can say defa ul. D E F A U L T default URL is equal to uh, that is profile.html and the login URL remains as login.html. Alright, and let's see this. Alright, so this is the login URL. You stay in the login URL. Please write a username and password. If you write something wrong, incorrect username and password. If you write correct, right you have to get redirected to the profile page hello and id from the profile page and so on and so forth it's actually working fine now and let me explain you again as view accepts login url which is login.html and default url which is profile.html <coughs> so it's not going to work unless the view has two attributes in the class login url and default url if i delete both of them you will see you'll get tremendous errors right because uh, it's not defined so you are going to get error here and the error is going to be invalid keyword login url so it's not defined so i'll have to define both the properties and both the attributes of the class here right only when i define them will you be able to pass it now i go to views and now what is happening all right when it is get you don't do anything just display login when it's get when it's post take username and password right store it in the variable username and password if nothing is being written go and show the message please write a username and password on the same login url right if username and password does not match remain on the login url but different message incorrect username and password if everything goes fine 
go to a different url which is default url now default url is profile now if i change default url let's say about i go and change my default url to home.html so now what do we get should we get home or what right now so let's try loading what happened yeah we will be redirected to home so see starting the server all right so if i type something wrong i remain here but if i type something right i should be redirected to the home page this time why am i going to home page this time because the default url is home now i keep profile profile i keep my default url as profile so i will be redirected to profile now right uh, so hello and id from the profile uh, page what if you want now to get redirected right you're not getting redirected here if i show you this you're returning yes the page that's been displayed in front of you if you can see if everything goes fine is actually profile.html now you can see that it is profile.html but the url has not changed right if i say profile now you can clearly see the the url has completely changed but there's no basically view defined for uh, this uh, url so let me go ahead and define another class here i can define class profile system so my class profile system is going to actually inherit from view and it is going to get a defined uh, get us i'll only accept to request and it should accept self because it is a python method not a function right and i will return no message at all right so the get function will return profile.html and i don't want to pass any message right here and i don't want to pass post um, i don't want to pass any message right here as well uh, i don't want post actually so i just want get here right uh, so i'll go ahead and make another url in urls.py all right and i will go ahead and call right i'll call accounts dot uh, which is not my class so my class is actually pro file so i cannot access profile because i'll have to import import accounts and import profile system so i can now use profile system as a view no parameter is meant to be passed here so i don't want to pass name is equal to profile base right it'll be as simple as anything the moment i type slash profile i go to profile system as view what is profile system it's the class that I have just made and get is by default which is going to get executed so i'll go to profile and now you get hello from the profile page and now what i want i want actually to be redirected i want to get redirected to my profile I want to get redirected to from login page uh, to the profile page. Now, how do you get redirected from login page uh, to the profile page is what we have to understand. And what time is it? So, I'll have to see that there is good amount of time remaining. We can still take 10 minutes. Right, so we can take good amount of time now. So, what I can do right here, if you want to get redirected, right, and I'll go ahead and this is the rendered response that you're giving you should not use the rendered response right here instead what i can do right here is the following uh what i do right here is i want to get redirected so number one here is uh, that my intention is to get uh, uh, redirected right and how do you get redirected is by just supplying so i'll say for example return i will not return these many things so i would rather return redirect i want to return a redirect and i want to get return a redirected to profile right if everything goes fine i want to get redirected to profile so let's see 
if I am okay. Let's see whether we get redirected to profile this time. So I'll say NIIT and password, and now you can see I'm actually redirected to the profile. And if I hit enter, you can clearly see I'm redirected to the profile. The only problem is that once you get redirected, as you know that HTTP is the stateless protocol, it's completely the stateless protocol. Right, so you have to understand this HTTP is a stateless protocol. Right, what is HTTP? It's a stateless protocol and states and to maintain a state of a page requires right to main it explicitly now what do you mean by this explicitly you cannot right for example hello from what earlier we used to let's say about pass message right here right uh, we used to pass the message we used to pass the uh, redirect to you right and how do you basically uh, get the same message right here if you are getting redirected all right and uh, you will not be getting this parameter right here. For example, if we used to pass this message is equal to, for example, hello. So will I be able to pass the same message if I get redirected? So let me go to login page again. And I type NIIT and I type password. And now I get redirected. And you can clearly see we're not getting this message yet. Even though you're passing it, where is it going? right message is not displayed in profile yes the message is displayed what is in the message mm, let me see in the views message is let's say the message is going to contain the username so if one of the message contains the same username will still be redirected mm, let me go back to login and say fahim and not fahim actually an id and password so if i click on login hello from I'm still not getting this message here why because you're using a different URL here right uh, so there's no dispatcher used earlier we were using dispatcher that includes the file if you're not redirecting right render yes it's possible to use but in redirection actually you're losing the state yet right you're losing the state of a page because you are at login page right and uh, if you get redirected to the profile page you will not be having the things which are available in the login page will not be available right there. So now what we are going to do in that case in order to maintain the state of a page explicitly we use hidden types, we use the context, we use sessions, cookies and cookies we use two kind of cookies persistent and non persistent right http hamesha kya kaam karega will not let you remember the state of a page right you can either use any one out of these to remember the states of the page or the second option is that you can pass the same instead of passing the message here you can pass it in the url go to the profile page but do one thing pass a get parameter after question mark uh, right you can pass message is equal unto and then you can add concatenate the message parameter here now you'll be passing the message in the url right and now let's see whether you'll be able to get it or not if you pass it across the url and id and password now you can see you're passing message is equal unto NIIT. Now you can see, will you be able to get the same message because you have to get this message in the profile.xhtml as a param, right? You will be getting it as a parameter. How do you get it? So that remains the question, right? So you have to get it as a parameter. So I can say req you or you can say that request dot get something right or whatever you want to get uh, from the parameter right so for that we'll go to the class now now see how this thing beautifies right i know that by default uh, get is called right what is the message that you're passing login here 
okay what is the message that you're passing in the class profile system get is called you're not passing any message right here aren't you passing yes you're not passing i'll pass the same message here i will say message is equivalent to r e q u request dot get it is going to be a request uh, dot get and the name message now once you go to the profile system get is automatically called and you're taking this message right if you can see this uh, this actually is the question you're taking this message uh, that you're defining here it's just the variable name that you're defining here and it takes the value get message and where is this going to come from it's going to come from the url message and iit right and now let us see let's go ahead and log in all right so i have to go to the login page and i get please write a username and a password i write something wrong incorrect username and password i write an iit and i write password and you can clearly see hello and iit from the profile page and where is this actually come is coming from the url actually you can see if i write instead of an id if i go ahead and i write fahim and then you say hello fahim from the profile actually you're taking it from the url right here so now if you don't want to take it from the url what you can do is uh, let's have a forget it i don't want to take anything from the url but i want to take something air uh, from the session session is a very important thing uh, right because we have to learn all the following technologies right here uh, cookies, sessions, hidden types, context, right? So we'll be starting uh, with sessions uh, actually, right? And how do we use those sessions is, is basically uh, the question of the day, right? Now let me give an overview because sessions and cookies will be for the next class, uh, right? But yeah, it is the middleware that we have to understand how do we use it, right? And I'll just show you basically the overview of how to use it, right? And then and why to use it right because we need to maintain the state we need that username to be available for example if i go here if i delete this right profile and you can see we're getting an error right here why because you're not passing the message if i don't type anything we say hello nothing from the profile page and if i don't type message i'll get an error so that is where the problem lies because uh, what happens in the profile it expects one parameter you know you are expecting one parameter you can still do error handling, all right? Error handling is very important and you can still try error handling. And you can see if request.get message is not equivalent to null or is not equivalent to empty. If it is not equivalent to empty, then you can say message is equivalent to take it from the URL or else you can say else message is equal to something blank i don't want to show any message here and here i can pass the same message parameter all right you can do error handling up to the extent whatever you want you can do error handling right here now you can see i'm not passing anything and i get an error right here so i need to correct this error first okay if request dot get message is not equal to blank uh, then you say message is this and else the message is this right all right so let me define message is equal to something blank and if the get parameter is valid you get to display it and if it's not valid uh, you don't get to display it so indent indentation error again okay let me correct this indentation error so message has nothing if request don't get message is not equivalent to null a message is equal to request dot get message else message is actually blank so i'll not have to use else here so let me just okay so let me just not use it this is inside the indentation body here and this is outside the if so message is equal to dollar request and you use the same message here i hope no error this time
still have an error here. If request dot get message, uh, maybe we'll have to use double quotes here. I don't know. We use single quotes earlier. Yeah, it's not going to create any problem here. Message M E S S A G E. Message is equal to Fahim, so I'll pass it. I still have some indentation errors right here. Message is equal to request underscore get message. And if everything goes fine, so you render request go to profile and pass this message here. So I don't find any error right here. Indent does not match any outer indentation level unknown line number nine. So this is line number nine. Actually, this message is wrong. The message should be in line with this. Fine. So let's see. Hello, Fahim from the profile page. If I take this Fahim away, I don't get it. But if I take everything away, I get an error still. I can clearly see this error, right? Because it's not an error. It is an exception, right? And if you know how to handle exceptions. I'm not going to go to the try and catch block. So this is going to be very tough right here. So I'll say, okay, I do not use get parameter. I don't want to use get parameter, right? I'll just go to profile and here I don't want to use any get parameter, right? I just simply, okay, let me run the server again. I just want to rely on no message. So I don't want to have any message here. Fine, so just let me simply display the profile page. Now my profile page is displayed, all right. Uh, so we have seen that the get parameter that's been passed, if I log in and I IT and password, you'll see that the get parameter that's been passed will not be taken now, so I don't have to pass any get parameter, all right. So let's say I don't pass any get parameter right here, okay. So redirect to just profile page and nothing else i just want to get redirected to the profile page fine so let me go to login again and see whether i'm using plain redirection to the profile page yeah we have plain redirection to the profile page and here what i'll do is use sessions before i get redirected now i'll explain it it requires good amount of explanations but i'll explain the theoretical tomorrow uh, right and I will use request dot I will say request dot session okay so this is what we have to use it here uh, request dot ses sign session and call this session as auth session I'll call this session as auth session is equal to username so now I'm setting a username to this session. I'm not setting this username to uh, any variable request or anything like that. So it's just plain session. So I'll go ahead, I'll go to login. And if the login happens correctly, a session will be started. Now you can clearly see we're getting this error here. Return self dot cursor dot execute SQL param. So I don't want to do this, but uh, there's nothing like a Django session now we need to actually import this right what do you do you import sessions right and uh, what is a session it's actually a communication between the client which is your machine and the web server right and the first thing that i will do is i will see that whether the session is included now you can clearly see django.contrib.sessions Installed apps, it should be there in the installed app. That is the prerequisite before you start with sessions. So installed app should also have django.contrib.session and the middleware should be there. That is django.contrib.sessions or middleware, that's session middleware. Uh, so this is django.contrib.sessions. So I'll say, I'll go to my views. So I will use this here. So I will say from Django.contrib.session import, right? So we have base session, right? Or we can say uh, import. So I'll directly say I am people have to import Django. As 
session. So let's see how it goes. Session.set attribute. Let me go back to login and I'll say NIT add password is password. I click login. I still have an error uh, right here. Though I have imported it, right? Uh, but yeah, we're still getting an error. I don't know. Just a moment. We have to understand the explicit sessions here. We have backend cache, we have front end cache. How do you set it? Request dot session. <laughs> The request should be there. I don't have to import anything right here. It is request to dot session. So why do I report it? So just a moment. We already added the apps here. Um, I will go and say request. Or it is in response. Yeah, it's absolutely right. So it should be request dot session right and it should be okay we don't have any problems right request the session is there so what if I use request dot session dot you can see this right here we have request dot session dot default or del request dot session or session is equal to username yeah, there's no problem. It should be no problem at all. And it is no problem at all actually using sessions. Okay, let me see what time is it. All right, the time is that the session is not working, right? So we do have time and uh, if the sessions are not working, what you have to do is run the following command, uh, right? I will run, go to not the Python, but go to the PowerShell and type the following command, Python, right? And you have to type this command because migrations are very important, right? So I will type manage py dash migrate, right? Uh, type the command Python manage dot py migrate and now wait until the migrations are done. And now what you can do, refresh the page and try and log in. And your login should have, you're setting the session and you're setting the value of the session as username. Right? And now what goes in the session is username. I'll say an ID and password. Password. And now you go to the profile page and see whether the session has started or not. I'll go to, 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 to the application and go to cookies right here and see yes the CSR token is already there but the session has already started now if I delete this session again and I go to login and see after I log in so you see the session has not started now if I log in I will go and type an ID and I say password and you can clearly see a session has started and what is this session it's a long theoretical class. The next class is very important. The session is basically a communication that is happening between client and server. That's a handshake that is happening between client and server. But how do you extract what is in the session is my question, right? And as long as the extraction is uh, basically concerned, uh, right, I will say, I'll display it here. I'll go to my profile page and instead of message, uh, right, uh, what I'll do right here uh, in the views.py, I'll go to my class profile system and I'll type message is equal to r e q u r e q u e s t request dot session and uh, the name of the session is auth. What was the name of the session? The name of the session was auth session and I'll access it with auth session right here. Right now the message contains whatever is in the session. I'll refresh. Okay. And I'll say login. And now let's see message 
is being passed here. So I'll say message is, or we can say SESSS. You can name it anything. Message is something that I pass as SES and it is going to be taken as message inside profile.html. Now you can see, are we taking it as message? Yes, we're taking it as message. So let me go ahead and refresh the page. Login and ID and password is password is password and now we get hello and ID from the profile page and you can see even if you refresh it 100 times it's not going to go if I take it from one page to another page and you can see an ID remains that means now we have been able to maintain the state of the page explicitly right and how does it go if I go to inspect element I go to application and this is the session ID if I try and delete this and now if I enter now you can see that there is an error the session has been destroyed auth session does not exist right uh, and uh, now if I log in and I can clearly see that the auth session does exist after the login now if I take this route I say login session after I log in session gets set and in the profile page session is are retrieved and this is what we are going to work with in the upcoming three or four classes right and uh, migration is very important because you need to compile everything through if your session is throwing an error if you're getting error right you can use migrate right so that every single thing that you have defined here is turned on right sessions by default are not allowed the moment you write request.session it's not allowed but you can run the command in the powershell python migrate and even if you're not running here in the powershell what you can do is uh, you can uh, actually run the same command um, in the here all right uh, so you can run the same command migrate so you can say python manage.py migrate can be run here right because we have already migrated what can be migrated authentication types and sessions requires to be migrated so after you run migrate your sessions will absolutely work right and now you can see that you're starting session in a page which is login and you are taking what does it take it takes a username for example now right if i give any username right here so it's going to be taken so now where is the user it's in the session this is the only thing right a session is the only thing that can be accessed from one page to another page right if you are redirecting right so session is very important very very important it's throughout the django we are going to learn the session very well but yeah we know that session has two types for example if i take another browser right here okay if i try and log in now i go to profile i'll get an error i will have to go to login and for that I have to start the server so I can say run server so server has started I can go oh my god so I can go to login and you can see you're accessing it and if I say an ID and I say password hello an ID from the profile page but in case if I close down the browser now and if I reopen the browser you will clearly see right uh, that it still exists right uh, now there are two kind of sessions one is persistent and another is non-persistent do you want this to exist or do you do not want this to exist if you don't want this to exist right we have to apply non-persistence and i'll show you how to apply that as a value but in the meantime if i still go to inspect element and go to applications and i go to cookies what are cookies what are sessions what is happening in the background so many questions in your brain we will be explaining everything tomorrow now you can see it has deleted session is deleted and it's creating an error why is it creating an error after you delete the session is only because of the fact that you're trying to access session right here and you can see this right if i just delete it and i say it is equivalent to actually nothing hello i just pass it manually and your profile page will not be having any error you're getting right even if the session is not there, even if the session is deleted, now you can see, I can delete the session. Now the session is deleted, we're getting hello. But in case you're accessing session right here, right, you're getting data from the session. If the session is not state started, it is going to throw an exception like this. You can still choose this exception. You can say if, right, the session is not equivalent to 
to none. None is what is null in other languages, is none here. So I can use the same. If it is not equivalent to none, if it is not equivalent to none, uh, then this ses is going to, SES session is going to take uh, the session variable. All right. And in case if it is equivalent to null, you can say ses is equivalent to a n o n y m o u u s anonymous. And now you can clearly see, right? Uh, so you can see this exception value is still right here. If request dot session auth session is equal, not equal to none, then it takes this. Otherwise, SCSS takes anonymous. So if I go to profile, it's still throwing an exception. Let me do something else to solve this problem of yours. I can say session or SESS is a variable that takes nothing, right? And I can use an exception that is try. If the session is not started, right? Try to handle the exception. If there's an exception, all right? So you can say accept, all right? And I can say ex exception as e. We're catching the exception right here. All right, and uh, we say if there is an exception, session is equal to a and o and anonymous, anonymous, right? Refresh. Okay, the site cannot be open, so we have an error right here. What is this error? We still have this indentation. Error. Okay, what is try? Session is equal to SESS is equal to. Let me just get rid of this. 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 All right. So. Okay, let me save this and check for the error again. Okay, you go, hello anonymous from the profile page. Now, why are you getting anonymous right here? Right, because session has not started, it has created an exception, right? Session has created an exception because you're trying to access something that does not exist, right? In that case, the exception is going to be caught and message is actually going to take this SESS, which is anonymous. And now, what if the session has started? Uh, right, I'll go to login, and let's say the session has started, and I will just hit enter. You're getting hello and ID from the profile page. And in case if session has not started up, you know, developing professional applications and developing application are two different things, right? So if I delete the session, I'm handling the exception, I'm getting hello anonymous from the profile page and so many things coming tomorrow. If you have understood 40 to 50% of today's class only, so let's not be, uh, you know, let's not worry at, at all, right? Uh, because the next class will take out and we'll try and explain everything in a possible way, right? So we shall be explaining it up to the extent possible. So practice very hard and uh, wait for tomorrow's class. Tomorrow's class is going to clear all your confusions if there are any. Until then, I wish you all the best. It's already been the longest class of the session. One hour, 23 minutes. I wish you good luck. Bye-bye. Take care. See you tomorrow.